Yeah, like I said, just turn the screen light off when you're not using it. And don't bump this. And I just aim that in the direction. Yeah, you look, look it's got, it covers heaps of shit. Cool. Yeah, just click go live when you're ready. Alright, and then just leave it the whole time. I'll oh, just, I don't know, face it over the tour, yeah. I'm meant to buy a webcam, but I don't know. as if she or any of us has any right to go into Musgrave and impose healing on anybody. This is just paternalistic rubbish. The organising committee took no responsibility for the decision to go to Musgrave. After convincing people to go based on misinformation and ignorance, they were all but absent until Thursday, four days. We had managed to hold things together, but people wanted to leave on Thursday. Instead of accepting that sentiment and waiting until the GA, Kate took it upon herself to solve the please problem wait. her way. Around 4 p.m., Kate called the police and requested extra, yeah, be, extra police answer. patrols in yeah, Musgrave Park. So as a result of us being there, more police would be patrolling Aboriginal people in Musgrave. No matter which way we look at it, and despite all the conflicting stories and misinformation, we were bringing trouble to Musgrave Park. The danger of this had been made very clear at the GA where we discussed going to Musgrave, but this was ignored by the organising committee, who were more concerned about the space to set up their infrastructure than they were about genuinely standing in solidarity with Aboriginal people. A line has been crossed. In the name of Occupy Brisbane, people in the park were going to be harassed by the police. This put many people at great risk. The willful ignorance of Kate and the organising committee put people in danger. At this point, I and many others made the decision to leave. The acts of the committee have put people at risk a number of times, but this incident crossed the line of principle. I will not be associated with a movement that thinks it's OK to call the police in the Musgrave Park to protect itself from Aboriginal people. This is an utter disgrace. For almost a month, I've consistently worked in the spirit of the occupation movement and worked with others to create a space of empowerment. I have faced at times extreme opposition from Kate and supporters of the organising committee, including being physically assaulted on November 1, the last day in Post Office Square. I was willing to withstand this, but now a line has been crossed and there is no going back. Until Occupy Brisbane is willing to get rid of the hierarchy imposed on it from the beginning by the organising committee, it will not only flounder, but it will find itself put at risk time and time again. The organising committee pretends it is just another working group but it continues to act without the authority of GA meetings and in this latest incident, their action has caused irreparable damage. This unaccountable hierarchy makes a mockery of the Occupy movement, which is built upon participatory democracy and a rejection of having self-serving leaders imposed on us from above. Um, in light of that, um, I guess I talked to some people about that this morning and as I understand it, at lunchtime today there was um, a, a fairly broad consensus um, about um, dissolving or getting rid of the organising committee. But as I understand it, that was um, seen in terms of setting up some sort of open logistics or organising committee. But in my mind, that still imposes a hierarchy and still allows for a mechanism in which people can act in the name of our movement without the authority of these general assemblies. I think the general assemblies need to be effectively the organising committee. <coughs> Working groups need to report to the general assemblies and be directed by the general assemblies. And that's the, the spirit of the resolution, um, which I think I've drafted because I think that we need to have something that we can put into print, um, that nobody can dodge. It's as clear as day exactly what we're saying um, about this movement. Um, and that's, uh, if people, I don't think there's enough copies, so I'll read this out to you. This is the resolution that I want to put to the meeting. The Occupy movement belongs to the 99%. No one can claim ownership of this movement. It is a movement of the people for the people. We will not be intimidated. We stand in solidarity with the Occupy movement worldwide and declare our commitment to the democracy of our movement. All decisions that affect the occupation are decided by the General Assembly meetings. Nobody will act in the name of Occupy Brisbane without such actions being agreed at a General Assembly. Nobody will speak on behalf of Occupy Brisbane without the approval of a General Assembly. 
we reaffirm that our strength is in our collectivity. Through the occupation working groups, we will get the work done together. We will learn and share our skills together. In light of these guiding principles of democracy, this General Assembly of Occupy Brisbane formally dissolves the organising committee and forms the following working groups. Yes. Um, I'm going to read them out and there's three, uh, two additions to the printed one um, which I'll add as well. Safety and security, supplies and donations, web work, media, lighting and power, community outreach, arts and culture, legal, kitchen, toilets, free university, facilitators and minute taking, Indigenous liaison, emergency, moving, lost property. Um, and, and to add to the printed version, sanitation and cleaning and mediation and mental health. Um, volunteers for each working group will sign up in the coming days and each working group will report to the GA meetings about their progress. Um, so I guess we will Everybody, is everybody happy with that? Can we, yep, get a consensus? No, no dissent, no dissent. I was just going to, yeah. what about finance committee? Did you say finance as well? Yeah. Uh, well supplies and supplies. donations. Supplies and donations. Awesome. First aid, where would that one fit in? Uh, safety and security. Oh, yeah, mental, no, uh, that's mental health and mental health. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, there should be a first aid. First aid might tag onto that one. But what was the full name of the, the, the last two you added? Sanitation and cleaning and? Uh, there's sanitation and cleaning, mediation and mental health. Mediation. And I think first aid <laughs> needs to be a separate one to add to that list. Um, one thing quickly, I completely agree with the proposal. I'm just speaking logistically. There's going to be people who want to be on more than one committee. And so we're going to have to set up times for each committee so that they don't run into each other. So that if you want to be at more than one, you can be at more than one. If you want to be at all of them, you can be at all of them. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks. Um, I want to add something to the second paragraph of Kathy's letter. Um, it was raised briefly at, at lunchtime GA, but we we said we'd discuss it in more in detail at this GA. Um, I'm of a, an opinion that the occupiers of this movement, the people that actually camp out on the ground. Their, their safety and decision making, where they stay, and all the immediate demands of staying out, outside in that situation um, should take precedence within that group over, over the decisions made in the GA because that reflects, um, that reflects immediate safety and yeah, the consequences suffered by that group and not by outsiders. So I think that I'd like to add that on as a suggestion. Can I? Can I? I don't think that there should be any group that takes precedence over another group. And if you can't be here at night time, then you can't be here at night time. And if you don't feel safe somewhere, then you obviously shouldn't stay where you don't feel safe. I think there should be an element of personal responsibility in where where you are, and that that you know if you camping here have a concern bring it to the GA and talk about that concern hopefully if we you know develop things consensually from the beginning there won't be an isolated group who feel unsafe if something happens in the middle of the night then of course you need to go home if you're not feeling safe <coughs> yeah, um, yeah of course like theoretically um, we reach a consensus on something everyone agrees to it I suppose we're um, where that was coming from and because um, I was privy to that too and probably my interpretation is that um, to some extent um, a bunch of people blow in, um, make a decision about oh this is a really good place to stay and then disappear and then the people who are actually doing Occupy are the ones who are left to put up to make that decision work right. on one another. So it's, um, and, um, 
Yeah, so it's been quite a bit of that. I mean, I guess theoretically you can deal with that if it's a true consensus decision, but um, <laughs> without naming any names, there's certain people who, who come in and say, this is a really good place, um, give it up support for it, but then haven't actually been on the ground. So if you if you have a really strong belief in, a, in occupying, a, occupying a certain place, um, it almost seems like you should be able to um, vote with your feet and actually occupy it. and then if, if the people who are occupying have more say and i agree it's a sticky slope so i don't know what the answer is but um at least then, you know if you want to if you believe a place is really important to occupy then do it mm. then occupy it um and i don't know, but uh, yeah I, I agree we probably need i don't know what the exact answer is to, to sort of break the precedent but um maybe we just have to be more careful with I agree that people on the ground should have more, um, I don't know if I can say this make it not sound bad, but more sway over decisions that happen on the ground. Oh. Like, people that are camping here together yeah. Yeah. as part of an occupation yeah. need to be making decisions together as part of an occupation who are camping. The, the ideals and what we believe and all of that kind of thing, you know, that's all stuff that everybody can discuss, everyone who wants to be part of the Occupy movement. But if you're actually occupying the space, if you're actually, you've been sleeping here for three weeks, like, I personally have been here from almost the beginning. I've been here almost every single night. And I feel like if somebody's coming in who just kind of passes through here and there, and they decide that they have more sway over the people who are camping and the camping decisions, that's, that's not cool with me. Like, I've been here, I'm oh. camping and I'm going to make decisions about my camping based around the decisions made by other people who are also camping. Like, that's just how I feel about it. I'm agreeing with myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, excuse me. Um, I just, yeah, I just um, want to base my proposal on um, situations that still happen. Speak up. Speak up. I want to base my proposal on situations that have happened from at least two times throughout the movement that I've been able to, I've been able to think about and see that, that pattern. And I also think what you said about individual responsibility is very good. So maybe um, I just thought of um, if if we have a GA and there's people proposing things um, about where we camp and the things that directly affect the occupiers, maybe we have to make it so that every single occupier has uh, consent to the ideas. And in that way, nothing's weighted more or less, but it just means that the actual occupiers have a full consent. To <coughs> when you say the, the occupiers, you mean the people camping? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, um, first, just a quick question you, I didn't completely understand that, that we right, who are actually, I didn't completely understand <laughs> your point there, that we who are actually sleeping here occupying have the full consent of? Um, so, if an idea is brought forward by someone who's not camping here, it has every right to be said and discussed, but in consensus, every single occupier has to consent to that idea for it to affect okay. the movement as a group. Yes, that, then I agree with that, because my, I definitely have the sense that for those of us who are camping and occupying and here on the ground, not just in the daytime, but also in the nighttime, that. When, when other comrades, brothers and sisters of ours, whatever labels we want to use, um, we, when we have the sense that decisions are being made, being made for us by people who aren't actually here on the ground, that to me reeks of the exact same thing that the political structures we're here protesting against are. So I mean it's understandable because we're making the mistakes that our ancestors have made and that are all around us and everything, but, but please let's... Let's not go down that road anymore. And I have the sense that this, this shaking up that's happening today, and thanks to your two written things so far today, and that we're, it seemed to be dissolving the the pyramid at the top of the Occupy Brisbane and actually turning it into the General Assembly instead being on an even playing field level. I mean, sure, it'll pose logistical obstacles, but you know, we're up for that, aren't we? Yeah. Like that's what we've been experimenting with. Um, maybe you're just on that as well. I think definitely a, a full consensus on big issues like moving is really important specifically for people who are staying here because it is their personal safety and comfort and you know they're the people that are the you know all of us are the heart and soul but that's sort of largely what keeps moving. But also you know if we can just really 
remember respect for each other because when you're voting on decisions and putting things up, think about other people and how it affects everyone and just really think about respect for each other and I think we have to get further. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just a question, Mira. I'm not sure if um, you're saying that every decision at the GA needs the consent for the people who are camping or just the decisions that immediately impact where they're camping? Um, it has to be the occupying group if they think they'll experience any consequences from the decision, have to have complete dissent. So the discussion was about having a, um, having a march on the weekend, putting flyers out, the campers don't all have to agree to that. As long, yeah, as long as the march doesn't affect where they're staying or the feelings about where they're staying in a way that's derogatory to the, to the, where they, to the safety of where they're staying. I'm just wondering if, if something along the lines of this would cover would cover what you're saying. Um, to add in, um, non-camping participants at GA meetings are encouraged to respect the impact um, their role in the decisions um, will have on occupiers. Yeah. And maybe just um, something really simple like walk the walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, camp, camp. camp the camp. Um, camp, the camp. Oh, my, my concerns about making it any more sort of specific than that is one, like we need a hundred percent consensus on any decision anyway. So that sort of covers the consensus question. But secondly, it's hard to define campers and non-campers because some people stay one night and not the next night. And so when, where does that line sort of, you know, it's a bit blurry. But also, um, like we want these general assemblies to be inclusive of like the general assemblies of Brisbane. So everybody who comes here, you know, starts to feel that we can actually have a say over what's happening. Um, and there's a lot of people for a lot of different reasons that can't actually sleep overnight, but still want to be part of that movement. So I don't, I, I don't disagree with the sentiment in any way, but I'm just worried about drawing too, too much of a, a line between the two. I noticed in the whole time I've been here that a lot of the campers don't come to the GA. So how do they get their consensus made, you know, if they're not going to come? You've got to come to the meetings, guys. Um, can I respond to that? Okay. Um, I know um, that a lot of the campers are a lot of the campers aren't coming to the GA not because they're camping and don't want to be part of Occupy, but because they don't like the way that the GA is being run. Mm. Like when they boy when when the campers that have boycotted the GAs boycotted it originally, they boycotted it back in post office square because they saw oh then that it was yeah, that that's when they started and they saw then that there was a problem with hierarchy, there was a problem with one set one set of people having more power than others. And they boycotted because they just thought that the GA was a joke because that's what it turned into. I mean, I'm sure that everybody who has been here can happily say that the GA's have been a bit of a joke. Like, that's why they boycotted. So, you turn up yeah, now, up, now they'll right? jump back into the... I think that if the GA's were constructed properly, not only would they get involved with the working group, but they'd be at the GA's as well. Uh, just when the GAs are on, we also need to look at security for people's stuff because that's when stuff often happens, is when everyone comes together, they see, oh, there's an open camp and stuff has happened, in, in, if you know what I mean. So we still need people doing the rounds, checking on stuff and stuff like that while the meetings are going. Hopefully that will all change and we're going to have a much stronger group. But also keeping in, in line with that, um, you know, keeping in mind respect for others. If, if, if you have a problem, bring it to the GA and make a noise. Don't boycott it. We, our issues have to be here. Because boycotting it, no one even knows there's an issue and that's how they, they, they yeah, do. They originally you know. boycotted the GA because they brought the issue to the GA and everyone shut okay. them down. So they well, went Well, let's move yeah. on and make yeah. sure we have, oh, bring all our issues up and respect each other here. Yes. Ewan? Um, I just want to suggest our, our mediation working group, that would be their first job if people are, don't feel like the, the GA um, is a, a space where they, they feel confident expressing themselves, then that needs to be dealt with immediately because it's, it's bad for democracy. Um, <clears throat> another aspect that probably um, allows this sort of um, situation to develop is 
with the facilitation. I think we've had some good facilitators lately, which has helped. <coughs> but um, if people don't get their say, they don't feel included. And facilitation is a really hard job, so we need to do two things. One, one maybe come up with a way to ensure that people can more easily spot people who need to speak or stack the list more accurately or something. Also, to let people know somehow that if you get missed, it's not personal, but just just jump up and down or something, and until and get the facilitator's attention, and and for facilitators to um, have a uh, have a way of of uh, really solidly getting people's names on a list so they can talk. A, a little list system, like if you want to talk, put your name on the list and then cross it off on the list, something like that. Um, I, I think we could just probably assign someone to that job. Maybe yeah. like a, a they have a staffer, someone yeah. Watching. Someone just writing down names, and then they don't have to even keep it in their mind. They just have it on paper. And just it. Um, also, one more thing. Oh yeah, I just in regards to facilitation, um, it is quite a a mind-consuming job, and a lot of the time you don't really have an opinion because you have to be fully focused on what everybody wants. Um, and I'm aware that the capacity for that comes through practice and maybe training. And I think you're organising. I'm not organising. Well, I was just interested in yeah. interested in organising. <laughs> yeah. So, like anyone interested in um, sort of learning facilitation, maybe we could get that going as soon as possible. Yeah. Yep. Um, Kathy. Sorry, the, I think the, I don't know your name, did you? Emma. Yeah, Sorry, Emma? I was going to say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, just on that, well, one point on the, the stacking, maybe um, whoever's stacking can write the names on the whiteboard so people know when they're speaking, and it's easier. Um, but just a note on the, like, being difficult to facilitate and people learning, like, I think it's really important for meetings to really respect the facilitator too because it is such a hard thing and I think as people are learning it, um, if the meetings respect that, um, then it's going to make a big difference to people's willingness to step up and give it a go too. Yeah. Um, also, um, facilitating is such a universal like life opportunity to learn because it's used in everyday life when you talk, when you relate. Um, so learning facilitation is almost like way to relate to people in a sort of peaceful, affirming way. So if you, like, I'm sure it'll benefit everyone to have a go up here. Because that, that's the idea. Just yeah, anyone it's easier can... to learn in front of your family than anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you can understand how difficult it is. And then as soon as you've understood that, you have so much more respect for the DA. I think it's also really important to sort of recognise those skills for people that when you are facilitating, at this point, there are about 40 people in this group, eight people have spoken and counted multiple mm -hmm. times. And the role of a great facilitator is actually pulling out the people that are silent, because silence doesn't mean you've got nothing to say, it just, you know, there are power dynamics, there are people that rise and natural leaders. So regardless of the way we feel about that, but I think it's really important to make sure you are drawing out the people in the group that are not as vocal or as articulate or as confident as um, well, I, I mean, I've noticed that with the facilita facilitators, a lot of the times it's the facilitator is chosen fairly, pretty much before the meeting. So mm. I don't know. Maybe is is there a need for the facilitator to be designated? Maybe in a, maybe even at the start of the day, and then that person can go around and talk to the people who are on the board, and say just to kind of get it into their head a little, not to sort of try to form opinions or sort of, but just to try to say, okay, what is it you want to talk about, sure. and how can we. Get through that. Yeah, preparation. Um, just a quick addition on to that. Maybe we can determine the next facilitator at the end of the night yeah. before his meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think, uh, is that a new point? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I was just going to say that. I think it's very important that there's a consensus on the facilitator. So, yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> So does that does that wrap up the um the, sorry well, it's just a, yeah one wrap up point um th th thanks for that very important point um and I I earlier today when we had our impromptu midday GA um 
I, I felt the suggestion, like, you know, somebody said, okay, who will be the facilitator? But I would encourage just to even question, like, why, why can there only be one facilitator? You know, why can't we have multiple facilitators and share the facilitation work? And also on the, and as a, a thing to also highlight with your, this was the resolution for Occupy Brisbane General Assembly, um, I'd, I'd put in something about full transparency for us to strive towards full transparency. Because I think that's been a big part of the frustration here. This like, okay, we have this, I mean, we've had lots of silly names, the Central Committee or the Central Organizing Committee or whoever these people are. Yeah, you know, and, and like, I mean, when, when you get the sense that, okay, well, how much money do does Occupy Brisbane have? Oh, well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, and who decided that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, let's get rid of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And be able to ask face-to-face -face. things. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that, that, that wraps up. Resolution. Can I, can I just to add, so as well as adding the, that bit about the non-camping participants, um, we strive, uh, after that, just put a paragraph in, we strive for full transparency and accountability. Cool. <coughs> is, there, is there any dissent to that? Can we just do something a little bit more than we have in the past I mean, yes, there's been no dissent, but can we just not drift off onto the next business? Can we actually say, yes, here we stand. We've just accepted this resolution, and here we stand with it. Something a bit more than. Yeah. 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 Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Now we can drift off on the yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe while he's talking, I can just add, maybe that can be the facilitator reflecting back the decision Absolutely. at the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. reflect back and call for yeah. <laughs> Next point. Hold on. All right, um, All right. I'll call um, out. Just, just first, the Brisbane City Council has come down to talk to us. So. So does anybody have the whiteboard marker? The longer they're here, the more they get paid. Oh, they're down. It's all right. I don't think the love of it, unfortunately. We're getting a little bit of time, right? So we can help. While we're finding the pen, my name's Chris McCann and uh, I'm the enforcement manager with council. Um, thank you for allowing me to address the group here today and I apologise for barging in the meeting. But what I'm here to do is to re reiterate a message that I've sent to a lot of you already from council's point of view is that we can't condone the breaching of our legislation in relation to the camping and the occupation of the parks. So again, to reiterate the message that a lot of you are, that I've that I've given to a lot of you already and that staff and council have already given. Okay, the camping, the erection of tents, the handing out of literature, uh, the occupation and residing of camping isn't condoned by council. Okay, if that continues, you will be issued fines and asked to leave the parks. And that's any of the parks in Brisbane. Okay, if you are asked to leave, having uh, determined or having To debate the merits of the legislation, the merits of your okay, cause, ask a question? and I'm happy to answer some questions, but I may not be able to answer all of them. Okay. Well, my question is, um, so according to legislation, um, occupying illegal because we're setting up tents, but also occupying the space of the group is illegal just because we're occupying the space. Is that correct? I, I, I really don't not going to get into the legality. No, I'm just of what asking you, like, what, what we're entitled to. Where like, can are we, we allowed to ourselves? stay here without tents up? <laughs> Well, speaking where, speaking where can speaking we go to get the details of the legality? Um, Good question. They are yeah. online, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell where they are. But if you look at the specific legislation, yeah. I can make inquiries to try. If it's not online, Please, I can make inquiries Please. to them. Because if, if we can't help you out with that, that's clear. What's, what's the name? If you go to the Department of. Uh, the, what's your name? My name's Rick. Hey, Rick. Okay. Okay.
the Department of Local Government and Infrastructure for the state government, their website, okay, they do list all local laws for all local councils throughout Queensland. Okay, if you have to, uh, the chapter 9 ordinance for parks deals with the specifics of what Chris is talking about now. <coughs> and you said that was Bris, was the name of the state said? government website for the Department of Local Government and Infrastructure state? and Planning, I state believe they're called. Website for? Department. Department of Local Government and Infrastructure. And, and Planning. planning. Oh, I think local local we can find government. it. <laughs> okay, and they do cover Here's all local question. laws. In regards to homeless, like quite a few here are homeless. Um, and if, if, yeah, ah. if we've got no cans, but we're sleeping just covered up and not making any disturbance to, to the public, are we allowed to sleep in the park? Or? I can't tell you what you're allowed to do, and you might think that's a, that's a, a palm off as a response. Yeah. And I can't give you exact specifics around that's okay for you and that's okay for you, but if, you, if you're generally homeless or if you're associated with the protest, well then it's not okay. Okay, all I can say is that it's the camping, the erection of tents, the handing out the literature, and all those other things I mentioned before. So I, I'm not going to give you a, a, an exhaustive list of what you can do. All I can say is this is what you can't do. I burn home and sleep in here. Hold on, we've got a facilitator. We've got a facilitator back, hang, so we're going to go in order. Does anybody know who's yeah, up next? Oh, there's no, there's um, no I've Abby got, I burn up. Abby. 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 Right, you've got something to say that's relevant to the topic, so can you yeah. go, mate? Yeah. You go. I've been home for 11 years, and I slept in every park from here to Tasmania and everywhere. Yeah. I, I've got many fines, you, look, I'd be in jail for the rest of my life to pay them out. So I don't really care what you do. You can find and do whatever, but I'll sleep where I want to sleep. Yes. But yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's well said. Well said. Well said. Did you know that by giving us fine, fines, you're actually enslaving us and forcing us to work to pay off debt that we've incurred? Oh, good point. <laughs> like I said, I, I really don't want to debate the merits of, the, of that and the legislation and the impact. I'm just giving the message. I just want to you. Like, okay. Yeah. Message Thanks, received. Man. Thank you very we, much. We won't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question, please. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm not, I'm not facilitating, so. Cool. No, I'd yeah. like to ask a question, please. What right do you have to infringe on where I sleep at night, and what right do you have to give me a fine when you're not the police? Because we are responsible for the management of the parks, and well, there's laws the that regulate the management of the parks. So I can, by rights, ask those people that represent rapid response or other workers to leave within my rights because they're not the police. No. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Need to look at your rights. Just, just in regards right. to the police, okay. obviously the um, magistrates were making a uh, thing with the distributed mediation team, and I called into the Bowman Street Police Station, just quickly caught up with um, the Assistant Commissioner of Police last night, and he said he's happy overall with the group and um, the behaviour and everything. So, so the police and police officers are pretty happy with the way you're going, but I understand what you're saying about the situation. Who's your supervisor? I'm, I'm going to be yeah, yeah, facilitator yeah. and point yeah, here. Do you want me to give the name down to your facilitator? Or? No, just tell me. Yeah, Brett Turbo. Brett Turbo. Guys, I've just volunteered to be stacker, so if you want to indicate, indicate to me so I can see you, and I'll take a list. Um, Did you say you're, you guys are not on the clock? No, I'm not. So, do you actually have a personal opinion? Like, that's you, not you know representative what? of really, I'm not on the spot, <laughs> I don't really want to be here to tell you the truth. Yeah. I'm not here to debate the merits of what I believe or what you believe or what, or what legislation. Um, we're not in the legislation. So, I'm just asking as a yeah. person, like, a human being, if you have a personal opinion on it? Or? No. As a human being a robot. The council, you're you're a robot for the council, you're basically a robot for the blind government. That's all you're a robot for. We need to oh, get some order and we need individual speakers who want to speak to put their hand up and no one else to speak, otherwise we won't get through this. Oh. I'm trying to live stream as well. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah, no, can't hear us if we're all speaking at once. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alright, I just want to ask if what you're doing here, in, in, as in what you're doing in your job, is going against what you believe as a person. Mate, really, I'm not going to answer those questions, okay? okay no it's here, I'm here to deliver the message. Yeah. Are there any questions about the message I'm delivering? No. All right, guys, like I said, thank you for allowing me to address you and I apologise for, um, for barging on your meeting. Um, I, I got one question. If we want to if we want to send a message directly to the Lord Mayor, how do we do that? Um, and, and, and if we request a direct response from the Mayor's office? Uh, the Mayor has to respond. Because it rests with him. Yeah, look, you do have the local council that, that, that you can go to. Um, 
she might be your best cause to go through. Councillor Abrahams might be your best point of contact if you have a message to send through the Lord Mayor. She likes us too. She yeah, came down and saw us. We have one more question over here. Okay. Yeah, can I ask you, has this gone before council meeting? When are council meetings? Yeah. Does Brisbane City Council ever produce a response to homelessness, as in many other states? And yeah, look, you're probably asking a number of questions. Yeah, so one, yeah, you don't, don't you're not aware of any council meetings or things like that, right? And you're not aware of any response. No, no, it's not that I'm prepared. not aware. It's, I don't have that information available for me. Yeah, or where, or have it in your back pocket no, or whatever. No. Yeah, I was just curious, and that's something I just mentioned to the meeting too. Often a council yeah. has a quite large documents, glossy, lots of money spent as a response, their response to homeless in this in the area. So I was just curious about that avenues yeah. and council. And you don't know whether any of this stuff's gone before council or no, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Okay. okay, thanks very much. Okay. Just thanks Ted. Tom Yeah. It's bloody outrageous you've got the hide to come down here and tell us we can't occupy. I just think that on behalf of I'm a ratepayer of Brisbane. Uh, and I think we're everyone here should have the right to be able to express themselves publicly. No one is here is causing a disturbance to neighbours. No one is here is making a mess or disrupting things for the West End community, of which I'm a member myself. Uh, and uh, I think we're part of the Occupy movement around the world. We should have the right to be able to occupy for human need, as opposed to the interest of the Liberal Lord Mayor, who is more concerned with uh, flashy property owners yes. than he is with the right to ordinary people who are property less. So, you know, we're part of the 99%. We should insist on the right to be able to stay here. Uh, and to defy council ordinances. Now, we've done it for four weeks. As far as I can see, Brisbane hasn't ground to a halt, uh, and we should be able to continue to do so without molestation, without arrest, without fines from the council. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's it. So that's our message to you that you can take back to the council. Thank you for your time. All right, we did have one and more. Have one Sorry, everybody, two. we've got one more person who wants to speak. I have to disagree with you somewhat on that. Um, not because I uh, disagree with um, your ideals, but it's not really fair to blame um, one council worker for uh, legislation that he doesn't have control over. Yeah, the Dinks are to come and inform us of what was legal and what was not, so that we were aware. Council could easily have raided us this morning and find those of us who had tents up. We've been very lucky to have been treated so decently today, and uh, while we should be continuing our occupation, I feel, we should not be taking it out on the people who are resp aren't responsible for the legislation that we don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say something no, no, on hang that? On, we, we've got a speaking right. list, so and you're third in line. Right, so um, I just wanted to, before we go any further, there are three people down to speak. Um, are there questions directly for the council left, or, that, or can they go? <coughs> I just wanted to say we're trying to help out the Brisbane City Council and the police to, to deal with the problem that needs to be dealt with. And we're trying to do it the best way we know how. Uh, if we could get a bit more help, maybe we could do it not in the parks and just have little areas in a building somewhere or something that's, I don't know, you know what I mean? Then we're not occupying the park. We've got to occupy. And that's got the consensus the group needs to make and then make those approaches to the city. So you know what's going on. Yeah, they have consensus decision making in the council. Um, is this a question for the council? Yeah, I was going to say, like, as part of our common law structure in this country, and things that have happened long before our constitution was even in place, um, it's established rights for us for civil disobedience, right to protest, right to assembly, right to petition, that are an inherent part of our common law system in this country. And we as public people, public Sovereign citizens, being. Sovereign human beings are occupying public space that belongs to us, the public. And you guys are supposed to be public servants. Not in a derogatory way, but in the term public servant, you're there to serve us. Like, we pay your salary, we pay the police's salary, the government's salary. We are the government. We're your boss. We're Anna Bly's boss. Us, the people, we own this ground. And we're, we're showing that we have the right to occupy it. Uh, and I just, who one those shoes, I, just buddy. Like, <laughs> I just like to say, I understand where Chantel was coming from. However, you are responsible for the laws that are being brought in because you voted it in. You've probably sat with council on their meetings and brought all this legislation in. 
So you're partly responsible just as much as what Quirk is and all the other council members for it. So I don't so I'm just gonna say I don't know how you can justify the laws that you put put into place. They are unfair, they are undemocratic and they're very autocratic. But they are the laws at the moment. But that's doesn't matter. I don't care about the laws at the moment. Okay. That's why we're occupied. Right. Exactly. Um, one more. I just want to say, in the spirit of solidarity, how can we blame one individual for coming down here yeah. and expressing to us the things which are our state laws? He's not rebutting the movement. He's not rebutting our decisions after he goes. He's just delivering the law with which he comes down to deliver. Yeah. We don't know what he does with his private time. He might be donating every day, but he's here on business. He's delivering his message from the government. And I thank you for that, personally. Can these, can these gentlemen go home now? Uh, or do we have one, one Any more questions? Um, yes. um, yeah, I, I just want to say that, I mean, this gentleman here is, is, a, is a pretty good example of, of, of what we are trying change. I'm not saying we're trying to change you, but I feel this gentleman here has, has been put in a, a, a bit of a tough situation. And that's what we're trying to change. We're, 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 I'm, I'm speaking. Hang on. I'm speaking. Yeah. Your heart's bleeding. No I'm speaking. Um, but there's a lot of people who have been put in tough situations being told to do things they don't want to do. Um, and so I just want to say, look, we're, we're not trying, I, speaking for myself, we're not trying to make trouble for you. We're trying to change a few of the things that we believe to be a bit errant, um, and I think you're you're a good example of of, of some of the things. Which we're not trying to liberate you, but we're, we're, we're trying to change things for, for, for people who, who want to go to work and earn earn food and, and, and shelter for their families, but do it with a bit of a better conscience. Um, so yeah, I think. You're good. Thank you very much. Okay, very quick one. We do have to let these guys go. Yeah, well, um, you come down and say. You can't condone camping in parks. What's your immediate intention in the next 24 hours? <laughs> you may be issued a fine for those offences. And, and asked to leave the park. That's our intention for 24 hours. Mm. So we're going to try and smack this camp up. <laughs> I said if, 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 if offences are being detected, <laughs> then we can, bear, we can justify the issuing of fine. Fines will be issued and you'll be asked to leave. What if we don't? I, I, I don't know if I can be much clearer than that. And what if we don't leave? Okay, uh, as a matter of process, I just want to propose that we move on and um, let these guys go. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could I just... Oh, no, we don't agree on that. Uh, um, could, could I, I just ask one answer. last question and then we roll? I want a consensus on that. Can, yeah, can we get consensus? Yep. <laughs> just before um, you leave, could I get just... Um, a last minute clarification of the offences that you'll be looking for if you, re if you return. The offences are erecting a tent, um, camping, residing, occupying in a park. Okay, then there's other ones about the distri distribution of literature, um, affixing posters to structures, trees, um, tables. Um, they're, they're the main ones. That, that we're looking at. And there's also the other ones about behave, behave sorry, hang on, sorry. And then there's also the ones which aren't necessarily within our local laws, but the state laws around the, the general behaviour, um, you know, the language and, and, and conduct of the, of the group or individuals. How much discretion do you have to Look, like I said, as I said to the gentleman there, if offences are being detected, then fines will be issued. So, where the, where the, evidence, allows, where the evidence justifies the issuing of fine, a fine will be issued. Could I just get a, like, from my question, could I get a definition of camping? Right, that's, I'm not going to get into that because you're talking about legal stuff and the message is... Okay. Right, thank yeah. you. Uh, I, just clarifying that answer you just gave, is the word occupy in the list of offences? Yes. Occupy. It's in the sections, yeah. That okay. Yep. Okay, um, we've agreed to let these guys move on. Yes. yes. And to we move on. Thank you. Maybe if anyone wants to talk to them individually, they can chase them. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Um, okay, everybody, can I just make a suggestion? Um, I know I'm only the stacker, not the facilitator, but um, if people would want to talk amongst themselves, stand away from the circle so that 
nobody else here can hear you because it's it's stopping other people from hearing what's being said at the front and no interjecting because it really does we've seen that it, it really puts people off and intimidates them sometimes and uh, and we want everyone to be able to speak if they want to without fear of intimidation i'm not sure it's an, if it's enough anymore to just say don't do it because it keeps happening and it keeps detracting from the conversation i'd suggest the only way the only things we can do is that and having either a stacker or a facilitator enforcing it as strictly as possible um, and unless there's another proposal but strong, strong facilitation, I think, is just the, the way to do that. Um, do you want me to? I'm happy to facilitate oh, thought, and stack. I thought. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll stack. I don't yeah. want to take over. <laughs> Hamish. Yeah, I've got a, a point related, but I was waiting for those. Have they gone? Yeah. 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 Um, a couple, a couple of, a couple of GAs ago. Um, I said I'd, I'd make approaches towards someone I, I know, a lawyer that used to work with uh, Terry Fisher, the civil liberties lawyer. And so he's got back to me. Um, he spoke to he spoke to Terry, who's uh, supportive of what's going on here, um, and he's given me. I've got I've now got his email to contact uh, Terry. To, to work out a time that he can come down to do a bit of a, a question answer session with people and uh, and actually actually establish our, our legal rights and where we can bend the rules and when we know when, and knowing when we are breaking them when we consciously decide to break them um, um, just to get to that that firm footing shut because the need to be there's if you want on the agenda and I don't know, there's yeah. been a lot of stuff flying around, sort of half-truths and, and bush lawyers and things like that. Um, and this guy, Terry Fish, is actually, yeah. you know, some people can be a lawyer, but they do other things and wouldn't know much about what we're doing here. But th this guy actually does know his stuff. So, um, I don't know if people want to talk about what would be a good time. Um, it's next on the agenda. No, I was thinking perhaps a Sunday afternoon or something, but I suppose maybe to discuss a good time and to, if it's okay, if I can get approval from the people here to actually make that email contact. Let's get a consent to that, or not. Do you want to call for consent? Yeah, can we get a consensus on that? Is there questions? Like, I think some of them. Um, I, I had a couple of people who put their hand up, so um, I keep oh, forgetting no, Francis. your name. Oh, Francis. I've got my name as well, it's gone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady over here Francis in the black. I, I just kind of, it, was a, it was just an observation about the group. It was interesting watching the men in the group all stand up. It's a really, sometimes that posture can be really intimidating because most people when they sat, when they, the council workers arrived, most of the men in the group stood up. That can be seen as really intimidating to other people. So it's just about, please watch your posture. Um, yes. Yep. No, the thing is, like, yeah, I stood up because I can... Like, Jack? Lots of people smoke. Lots of people smoke here. So, like, sometimes it's a bit disturbing, like, if you have smoke in your face. So I suggest maybe if the person that wants to smoke, like, maybe move a bit. Maybe to the back or away from the, the group? Yeah, yeah. Wind. <laughs> That looks like it was consensus on that one. I just want to say quickly with, with that legal thing, um, do you think it might be more appropriate <coughs> that the legal workshop um, consult with Terry O'Gorman and those people in the legal field and then convey what our rights and where we stand are through the legal workshop? Uh, yeah, I reckon the legal workshop should maybe be involved in contacting to work with Hamish, but definitely a Q&A for everyone, not just yeah. for the, the legal group. I think it would be really important to have him to come and address, address us, the yeah. whole group and have a Q&A yeah. with the whole group. Yeah. But then if the legal when team more people come in, then the legal work group can inform the people that come in after today or when that happens of what was grounded. But the legal workshop can deal with those people and tell them what was grounded at that meeting. 
Sure, sure. Just so long as everyone gets a chance to talk to the legal people. I think. Uh, when you say workshop, do you mean working group? Working group. Okay. Any other speakers? Yep. I just want to clarify. I think I think that's a bit of a um, misunderstanding there between because I I think you were saying that this event would happen in front of everybody, but for people coming after the event who weren't able to access that event, then the the legal working group would inform them. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there a working group? We haven't we haven't established a working group yet. So do we want Hamish to organise it for now? Or? Yeah, I Hamish consensus on Hamish organising a guided hunt. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Hamish, what's yeah. your consensus? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Just not so much necessarily. <coughs> so I think we've been involved in the process of approaching actual councillors <coughs> and. Um, Oh, you know, these that. individuals. Yeah, mic check, speak up. Can you speak oh, up so they can hear? Sure. Not so much necessarily because I believe they might be sympathetic, I don't know, but have we gone through the process of actually approaching individual councillors and such, if this is coming from council, or even going into mediation immediately, so at least if any points are issued, we can say, well, we've gone through the Justice Centre and put in mediate. This was under mediation at the time they were issued. And <coughs> You know, just to see more about councillors and council meetings. Okay, you. Can I suggest that um, when we do the working groups after this meeting, that will be their job for the working groups? Okay. Well, Francis. I think in terms of legalities, I've, um, I guess it's, it's it's time that we really started to. Then obviously, you know, this is a civil disobedience movement. Yeah. We're trying to push things as much as we can, but we also need to kind of work out what we want to push. And how far we want to push it because some things, some things we're 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 pushing in the wrong direction. Mm. We need to keep pushing the civil disobedience in the same forward direction. Not sort of okay, we're gonna we're gonna start sort of uh, moving in this direction. We're gonna start trying to push this boundary a bit more and uh, uh, I don't know, see if we can't kind of uh, I don't know. I can't think of an example, but, but the banks or something yeah, like yeah, that. we need <laughs> that's a good example. Thank you. We need to really keep pushing really keep on on focus mm. because we're, we're, we're obviously we're uh, transgressing laws but we need to maybe try to transgress as few as possible <coughs> and the, the really focus on the laws um i i agree really strongly with what you said um we need a really um we're here for civil disobedience and but however we really need to know and pick the right civil disobedience yeah. direction. Oh. And for that, we really need a knowledge of the legal system and where, where we stand within that. Um, also, I just wanted to, I, like you pretty much said it, that the working groups are forming out for this, but I, I just wanted to put an importance on some of them to really try and get together um, tonight and organize stuff, for even, even organize another meeting tomorrow, just tonight. Just really, we need to really start getting them going. If you're interested, um, I guess um, maybe we can have call outs or something like anyone interested in this group go there or or anyone interested in that group or something just so that we can all get together and meet each other and stuff yeah um, just so myself down I, I've, I've missed a bunch of GAs over the last week or so um, so I don't know if this has been discussed but I, I just to sort of echo what people have been saying I think we, we should start thinking about uh, campaign to open up public space um, to the public and, and <coughs> using Occupy as a platform for that. So, uh, and if we think of it in terms of a campaign, uh, there's many facets of that. One of them is being here and occupying a civil disobedience facet. The other facet would be talking to civil liberties lawyers, another facet talking to local councillors and trying to win support um, for such a campaign. And that could be... Um, and you know things like the homeless homelessness advocacy groups, particularly because I, as far as I understand, the Vagrancy Act is still in force, and well, the act that that guy just described banned homelessness, bans homelessness. So uh, this uh, that it would be a perfect campaign for us to sort of be involved in. I'd personally like to be involved in that 
and I'm happy to work with others in the working group, whether that be the legal working group that sort of comes up with the nuts and bolts or, um, or the General Assembly as a whole. Um, Lars, did you put your hand up before? Yes. Uh, I would also personally be, in, be uh, very interested in participating in that working group. Um, and thanks for, for reminding us of that, that. I mean, as you who actually live here in Queensland are more aware than, than I am, um, there are a lot of laws on the books. So civil disobedience is about, as you say, prioritizing which of the ones are our, our targets and which of the ones can we just kind of leave by the side. So as I heard it, he was talking about putting up tents here, um, distributing... Can you Sorry. Thanks. Sorry, I'm deaf. I couldn't hear it. <laughs> no, no, I, what I heard was number one, um, erecting tents here. Um, number two, distributing leaflets, material, what have you. Number three, attaching things to trees, etc. Um, I personally am not here to protest for our right to put up tents. You know, I like sleeping under under the open sky. If it rains, one can put a tarp over oneself. So, you know, I'm willing to not have to civilly disobey against number one. Number two, distributing leaflets and pamphlets. I'd say let's have a working group about that because that seems to be seriously restricting our freedom of speech. Yeah. You know? Uh, and another one, attaching things to trees. And Okay, fine, we won't attach things to trees. Uh, when he said camping slash occupying and he didn't have the actual legal specifics about what that refers to like let's please whoever's interested do the research on that as soon as possible because you know i mean that could be anything <laughs> and, and ahmed i think is you are in no he did indicate earlier anyway uh, right. are you there? Um, there's been a lot of work since that legislation was enacted about three years ago, so it was in re a direct result of moving the homeless on. So a lot mm. of people, so there has, there is actually the Pupilch, which is the uh, Queensland Public Interest Clearing House, which is a team of lawyers who volunteer their time and go into community centres and, and homeless centres and, and advocate on behalf of people who are disadvantaged. There's already a huge piece of work around that that's being done about this, the disadvantage that this law has created for people, for moving people on largely, well, largely in West End, which is where most of the homeless in Brisbane live. So it's about where you want to put your energy. Mm. Do you want to put your energy into a piece of work that's already been done and being done for a long time? But I agree with you about the, the right to have to distribute posters and flyers and, and because that limits your freedom of speech. I was just going to say, in this, uh, oh, you, the lady in the oh, next. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Oh, my turn? Yep. Uh, yeah. So I had uh, watched a um, Occupy video on the internet and someone spoke about that fact that we uh, we got to acknowledge that uh, the like people have been fighting these battles for a really long time. So we can either put a lot of energy into creating <laughs> new streams of fighting that battle or we can do some research, find out who's already doing it, and get behind it. And um, I, today there was a lady walking past, and I stopped her and I said, do you know what we're about? And I'm so glad I did, because in 20 minutes of conversation, by the end of it, she said to me, you guys need to practice what you preach. If you're here to talk about distributing the wealth, like spreading it amongst everyone fairer, that um, from her point of view, it would be positive to actually do that. So if we start, um, once we are up and running and get more organised, if we do fundraising or if we do events to try and actually already work with people who are doing it and to make it seen that Occupy Brisbane is about redistributing like the wealth again and to keep that in mind that that's kind of why we're here, to raise awareness that some people have loads and, the, and others have none and we think that should be spread out. So just... Um, I don't really know if it's about the topic, but it was just to follow on from that point. So, yeah. Max? Um, I was just following on from what Lars was saying, my interpretation of what the council was saying to us, um, which I, I see as either he's just being straight down the line, that's exactly what it is, in which case he did, he, he said, um, uh, residing or occupying which theoretically does include sleeping bags, sleeping on the ground, there's nothing. But um, maybe, like, maybe what he's saying there, maybe he's giving us a, a hint that 
if we're not handing out literature, I'm not the saying the saying we shouldn't either. I'm just trying to interpret what it's saying. So if we're handing out literature, um, if we're handing out literature, if we've got tents up or any any obvious sign of infrastructure, they'll fine us. If they come in the morning and our tents are rolled up under the table and we've got a sign or two up, they might not do anything. So I'm not necessarily saying we should maybe we want to give maybe we want to push the envelope but that maybe that's what he's saying maybe he's not maybe he's giving us a little out by saying no tents or, or occupying or residing and he's not defining residing or occupying so maybe they're okay as long as we're not being too overt and maybe we want to be overt but other just bringing that my impression up for a discussion no, I don't know. Um, I just wonder how long you you all decide to um, how long you hold these meetings for. If you've got a time, because I no, there's no time limit. I, was, I just came to ask for something. I have some work to do. So. Okay. Um, so, would you like me to put it forward that I can get you up next? If, that, if there's probably a lot of important things to discuss, so I don't, I don't know how you should work. I can, I can put it forward. Does, does anybody have any? Issues with this lady who's come down to talk to us. To rather brief, and I take her. <laughs> well, for me to say, it, well, I don't know how you work. I I don't know how we it's, work either. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm used to going to. I guess that a, a, I, I like a meeting that has a time limit on it, so you can organise other parts, things you need to do in your day and stuff. Yeah. Could I just say a response to that? Sure. Maybe we'll finish this topic and then we can. Get your topic in next. Yeah, is there a dissent on that or agreement or anything? Because I know I had something to say on that. Okay. Did you want to go? Um, uh, sorry, yeah. Francis wasn't from. Um, I, I, has anybody been following what's happening in Melbourne with the Occupy Melbourne taking Melbourne City Council to court yeah. regarding um, regarding what they're doing, basically trying to be legally allowed to camp out? Uh, they've apparently, um, at the moment, they've been, it's been knocked back, but pending appeal, basically. So the Melbourne, the Melbourne mob are, are really sort of taking it to the next step. They're really kind of, so they're trying to trying to find some precedents. They're trying to really, um, you know, get that sort of energy happening, which is positive. And I was also just reading tonight that Melbourne City Council has just popped in to the Occupy Melbourne group as well. So maybe all the councillors around Australia are saying, tonight's a good night to pop in and, and see the groups. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, so fo just follow what's happening in Melbourne with the Occupy Melbourne group because that could, if, if they are successful, which it, it'll just be down to the judge at the end of the day. It'll just be down to the decision of the man. So if they're successful, it could really work well for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just on that, um, yeah, it's awesome. We have different laws as well, so we'll be looking at. Can't, yeah, that will be a good thing. But Queensland has really, really strict crap laws mm. because of our crap government We're in the eighties. So, yes, we are. Yep. I was just on the phone with a friend of mine who's actually studying law, and I had a talk to him. He's going to get back to me. But he said under the Federal Assembly Act, which says that we have a right to peaceful assembly, which does say we do have a right to occupy, we do have a right to carry out acts of civil disobedience, we have a right to do this. And he's going to get back to me on the legislation of the law, because that's not what he's actually majoring in. So I want to get back to him and see so we can use these laws against us. We need to know our rights. So I know for a fact that these bastards here are going to try to screw this movement. And if we get moved along here, soon we're going to be occupying bloody the Gold Coast at this rate. We're going because they're going to keep moving us along. We're right out here now. We need to make sure that we keep going because if we don't, this movement's going to die in the ass. Sorry for swearing, but that's what's going to happen. That's if we true. don't get our legal rights together and get our shit together now, because now we've got this camp's dwindled down. I've noticed it's got smaller. It's got because a lot of people have left because they're frustrated with you know with the way things have been run. And I understand their grievances. People should have a right to have their say at this assembly. Not be, not be blocked and not be shouted down because this is a democratic and free assembly. So we need to talk to anyone who wants to talk here, should have a right to. If they have grievances, they should have a right to end them because this is what democracy is about. If we go and don't allow that right, we're no better than those fuckers in the parliament. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um,
I just want to say Crimco was next and then maybe yeah. Me. Uh, yeah, it was about something about half an hour ago. What they were saying is about issuing bits of paper. What's good for them should be good for us. How can they come in here and issue us a bit of paper? You know what I mean? Or literature, give us literature with a fine on it. Why, why are they so much better? That's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the irony. I just want to clarify a few things. Um, they, weren't, they weren't saying we can't occupy Queensland. But they're just for the, they're just for the parks. Oh, We're in a park. Yeah, that's true. the park legislation, not right. the occupy bit. So I just want to clarify that. Also, if there's legislation that's they're going to take action on us and kick us out of the park, it's a high likelihood that they'll take that action against the homeless people around us. So it's we should talk to them and get and go into like meetings with them and see what they think about this whole situation because it affects their livelihoods. So, yeah. Can I just say oh. something, please? On that note, I don't, in the end of the day, want to be harassed by every council worker that says to me to move on because I can't sleep here or there. If they're going to become like that, I'm going to offer me accommodation, please. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm going to get you off now. I don't think there's anything that we need to actually... We, we, uh, got a consensus on on getting together a legal group and stuff before I so don't. we got a consensus before on getting together a legal group and <laughs> things are going to move on from there we, are we happy to move on Please. yep okay Sorry. yep <laughs> just that, um i think he was hinting at the fact that they, they will come back tonight and move us on so i think as a last point to add on let's have a group discussion about that sure I think that's maybe what he was hinting at. yeah Definitely. Come on up. Um, hi, uh, my name's Adele. Um, I've just come here to ask for endorsement um, for a meeting on Saturday. Uh, the, the meetings, uh, it's all about solidarity for um, Julian Assange. Um, I'm, I'm not part of any organisation. I'm just kick-starting this because I, I asked around and I didn't get um, any response of, of much, so I just put it out there for a meeting um, um, to organise a rally in November um, as as one idea to start something off. I think it's really important. Um, I put it out there on the social networks, and I've tried to speak to as many people as I can. Um, had quite a lot of response, and and one and one woman um, suggested that I ask for for endorsement guys, so I'm down here asking for endorsement. Thank endorsement you. for, for, for a meeting um, for solidarity for Julian Assange, to, pl to plan action for Julian you Assange. Come, He's the leader. I'm yeah. asking for endorsement, which means um, saying that you support uh, yeah. support having a, uh, <coughs> a meeting to organise action in support of Julian Assange, who is um, the founder of WikiLeaks. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Out of the false charges, just, complete the Hang on. Just um, on. on that point, I think that endorsement from us um, includes, like, personally, I would endorse that, but we should get that consensus before you do this. But yeah. you're on our live stream now, so yeah. you should say what time, what it's about. Oh, yeah, sure. But Good I guess that, that might yeah. be after we get I'm a, a consensus that we it. endorse. Can we get sure. Sure. sort of... So, um, uh, well, is, it, is there any dissent that we would? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is is there any dissent that that we would um, support? Um, what, what we're talking about here. Right. Uh, I'm not dissenting. Just clarifying that it's 3:30 p.m. tomorrow in Musgrave Park. Uh, so, for people who do want to go after the rally, I'm Ewan. Hi, Adele. We've been hi, communicating hi, on hi. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and and. Personally, thanks to Adele for initiating this because it uh, was myself and some other people last time the WikiLeaks thing really blew up. Um, and, and who initiated the couple of rallies that we had, and I just haven't been able to, and no one else has. And Adele's on her own bat done it, so, yeah, which, which, which is very, yeah, which is fantastic because so, it's. Yeah, he, I, I don't know what's going on. Because, he's <laughs> because it's a it's a major major issue, and I I I just like to speak to that endorsement that that 
Occupy Brisbane should put our name as supporting the organising meeting tomorrow because WikiLeaks stands for exposing the the back the backroom actions of the one percent and 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 that's why Julian Assange is facing extradition to Sweden, which could see him extradited to the U.S. and disappeared. Um, and, and it's appalling that Julia Gillard has not stood up to defend this Australian citizen as well. So I wholeheartedly support endorsing the meeting tomorrow, which is just a meeting to, do, to get together to discuss how we respond to this extradition um, ruling. And to, I put forward that it was that we planned some action. We, we start planning action tomorrow, yeah. you know, because mm. with time short. Mm. Last? Yes, uh, two points to that. Um, thank you. Absolutely fantastic. I personally endorse that fully. Um, 3.30 tomorrow in Musgrave Park. Um, my understanding is that we're starting at Brisbane Square at noon. Uh, the Facebook, call it what you will, I have too many nicknames for it, uh, event page says 12 to 3. And, and I'm one of the people... I'm trying to... Thanks. Um, my understanding is 12 to 3 on the Facebook page. So, if it, it, like, please correct me if I'm wrong if somebody has a clear idea. It's 12 to 3 at Brisbane Square. Then we'll move on from there. Um, my original sense was that, that we would then come here and continue the speakers and the music and the spoken word, et cetera, here. So with this development, maybe bring it from Brisbane Square to Musgrave Park at 3, 5, 3.30. How long do you think that meeting will take? I put it down from 3.30 to 5. Okay. So 3.30 to 5, then after 5, then we can come here and continue the music, speakers, etc. If that's alright with everybody, that's part one. And part two is, I saw recently in a newspaper that uh, Julian Assange's mother was yeah, that's standing what, in a... Yeah, that's what initially made me want to right. do something, because I saw her by herself. So can we, can we try and invite her to attend I've, tomorrow? I've um, been in contact with her and I'm Great. waiting for a phone call Great. from her. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask your name. Lang. 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 I'm, I'm just, um, there's been no dissent about the endorsement, but I think if we're going to endorse this, we should we should endorse it. And like, yeah. we do we yeah. endorse this? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo! Woo! Free Julian! Free <laughs> uh, the truth! Cathy was next. Free speech. If we're marching um, tomorrow to where we're occupying, and assuming we're occupying here, but I think that's the, still a discussion for tonight. I was just going to suggest having the meeting here rather than Musgrave. I don't. I think it's better if we march to where we're occupying rather than back to Musgrave. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, I made the decision when I thought that you guys were in Musgrave, and I, I was just trying. Yeah, it was very hard to work with not really sort of by yourself, <laughs> but with a couple of other people. But try to make things happen yeah so I agree maybe um, it's just that people there'll be people that will be coming that won't I suspect won't be in the in the rally there's people that aren't even in that are just really behind <coughs> Julia mm. like that they it touches their hearts mm. and they're mm. not usually involved in political action and they're gonna turn up there so I, maybe if I'll bring my car and maybe if if someone with a car could, a couple of people with cars might see what I can do. Yeah. Um, I just said myself then, Lang. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd suggest that, that that a group and then Max uh, that a that a group um, can stay at Musgrave Park and and wait for people to show up. Give it maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and then um, drive those people over here. I've got a car. I'm happy to help with that as well. Um, uh, Lang. Then. Yeah, I think. Um, I think that's a great idea, but um, I also recognise that we haven't decided where we're going to stay tomorrow night. Yeah. So maybe if we get, I know you have to leave, so if we get your number yeah. and we can contact you with our decision on that or something. Yeah. So yeah. maybe, who's taking yeah. minutes? Or I don't know. I got who's got yeah. right here? Um, Max? Um, okay, so we've, we've endorsed that and we are essentially waiting till we decide where we're going to be staying tomorrow night before we make contact with Adele about um, where the meeting's going to be tomorrow afternoon. Um, last Just a minor point. Um, us not publicly announcing where the meeting's going to be also keeps them on their toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's already been done. Oh, yeah. Good. More on their toes. It's on our Facebook <laughs> as well. 
and it says Musgrave Park. Oh, that, might be, that might change. Yeah. Um, okay, so everyone endorse that course of action. Uh, raise your fingers. Okay. Um, moving on. <clears throat> Aim. Oh, Mozzie right. repellent. Emmy. 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 Okay. Um, I smelled some mosquito repellent on someone earlier, and because we've just moved here, the um, I would suggest anyone who's camping um, get yourself some mozzie repellent because you're gonna get smashed. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Um, and maybe is that something that individual people should be responsible for, or do we want to supply that as? Um, a resource for like our friends who don't camp here, but who come down for a, for a meeting and don't want to get munched. Um, I just wanted to add on to that. Um, I'm, I've been working with um, half a dozen other people on the first aid, uh, providing the bin made it down here. Uh, there's actually three tins of mozzie spray in the first aid bin. Um, we're, once things get a little bit more figured out on where we're settling, we're going to have the, we have a list that will distribute of people who have their first aid training. Um, keep us in, in communication of if you use things out of the bin because we need to make sure that that bin is stocked so if something comes up we have the resources to help people so so there are there is mozzie spray but just make sure that if you're using it up that you're letting uh, the first aid people know there will be a list inside the bin I will write the list and put the list in the bin tonight so that it's available to everyone and then we are looking for more stuff for it as well. <laughs> Just on the first aid question very quickly, someone called me today, they're after a red first aid kit, which was in Queen's Park. Has anyone seen a red first aid kit? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, it's probably buried at the activist centre. Right. Tell them the council. Uh, yep. I think <laughs> You'll have to speak up. The blonde-haired lady who has the little girl held it up and said we had the first aid kit here, a small red Yeah, one. that's when I last when we remember first it as well. Yeah. Okay, it's any more great. speakers on mozzie repellent? Uh, I guess the question still hangs in the air. Do we fund that collectively or uh, leave it up to individuals? I'd, I'm proposing we do it collectively, <coughs> just as we have with sunscreen. Uh, do we have consensus on that? Do we have consensus on that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Aussie repellent. All right. We've had Adele Lane. Um, I was just, I put solutions up to open a space for the, the discussion about what the council came with tonight. So I just, I put that up there so we'd have something talk about that. Um, I'm proposing, this is just my personal proposal and it's open for discussion. I'm proposing we just sleep really light here tonight and just move if they come and whatever. Just go down the next and other end of the park, I don't know. Um, maybe maybe that can be, maybe we need some more discussion on that. I'm also proposing that tomorrow is March. Um, this may sound a bit crazy to some, but we march to post office square and reoccupy or a similar square. Um, but yeah, maybe that's open for discussion. Um, okay, I've got two other p people. I'm just wondering, and this is just an idea, there's two items after this item that look quite short. Uh, one on meat workers support and the other one on hip hop stall at rally. Uh, does, I, I, I'm just wondering if anyone wants to speak to getting the small items out first so we can... Can and can we have okay, um, I'll the have Kathy speaking next. Yeah. Well, I think Lang's made the proposed, this is the agenda item, so I'm going to speak to what Lang's just proposed. <coughs> um, uh, I, I, firstly, I just wanted to, I guess, report on what happened back at um, Emma Miller Place, which is when we got the fines, or when I, I didn't, but other people got the fines. I think there was eight 
um, people that morning. Um, that's the only time, that was the only day that we've been given those fines, which is what the council guy was warning about before. I'm not sure if there's anyone here who got fined that day. Um, but a Andy was um, getting a, a group together to, to work out what to do about those fines. But what happened that night um, was the council came through during the night and took photos of people while they were sleeping or while they were getting up out of tents. That was what they used. They went, went back and um, matched up those photos with people they could identify um, with the police. Um, and then they came back knowing who those people were um, from the photos and issued fines to those people. So it wasn't everybody in the park sleeping. It was the people that they had identified from the photos. Um, there were $500 fines um, for camping or residing and it wasn't people in tents, it was people sleeping on the ground because those were the people that they photographed. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Um, the, I, to, to, I guess, just um, clarify, the, what that morning happened was the people who got fined um, had a meeting and a discussion and it was um, people who had fines before explained the process. One, they can, those fines can be challenged, um, that can be appealed in, in court. Um, secondly, well, they can be paid if people choose to, to pay them or are unable to pay them. Um, thirdly, they, um, they can be paid off um, at as little as $2 a week, um, I, I understand. Um, or they, and there's a lot of people there who said that they weren't gonna pay it at all. Um, and the result of that is um, they can seize your assets if you've got any. Um, and they can seize your license. Um, so I, I guess I just wanted to, to report that. Um, I, I'm not sure if people want to discuss it. I, I had something to say about post office square stuff, but maybe it's better to leave it. And okay. last, then Hamie, then Andy, or Andrew. That is you. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Last. Yeah, cool. um, it's uh, 7 10, 7 15 now? Something like that? Mm -hmm. 7 13, not according to this one. Um, there's a, if any of you are interested, say yes, Australia, the pro carbon tax, um, you know, coalition. They're having the celebration party. Uh, it started, I think, about an hour, forty-five minutes ago, at I think it's called the Fox Hotel, something like that. I think it's on Manning, Melbourne. Melbourne. Mel Melbourne. Melbourne. Thank you. Across. Sorry. Sorry, uh, Melbourne, right across from. It's just up from Manning Street, right okay. by the. Okay. I was too often. Fox Hotel on Melbourne, close to Manning. I'm going to go there right now briefly. Um, and then um, Abby Skye, who I hope you've enjoyed her music at our events already. She's having this 11, 11, 11, remember, Abby Skye and Friends in Concert. Uh, humble invitation to all survivors and veterans of war, native and indigenous Australians, politicians and armed forces, spiritual ambassadors, and the beautiful Australian individuals and communities. I hope that includes us. I think it does. No matter where you're from or what you believe, let's unite in the special day of remembrance of all that has brought our human family to where we are. That's starting in... 16 minutes at St. John's Cathedral. So uh, if you're interested in uh, packing up super quick and leaving with me, let me know. Otherwise, I hope I'll at least see you at this one. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Jaime? Uh, another one that, uh, another option to be paying off those fines is, I think, community work. Uh, uh, a few people probably don't want to do it, or, but that's optional. Once it hits spur, I think you can have the option to say I want to do like cleaning up parks is normally the one of the things that they get you to do. <laughs> it's pretty ironic. Oh, damn. Um, While yeah. wearing your office. And the other, the other thing that um, a lot of people were trying to, uh, Max was trying to address before, what hints he was giving. Uh, one of the hints that he said was if you actually can't afford maybe like, he didn't say it that way, but if you don't I identify yourself as being part of the protesters, you might not get fined. As in, when I addressed him and said, uh, what about the homeless? He's like, uh, if, you, if, you, if you identify yourself as one of the protesters, you, you are going to get fined. That's all I'm just trying to say. <laughs> The charge for littering is drop it on the ground. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you don't even take it. Um, Consider it. I just had myself, this gentleman, then Hamish. Uh, 
Yeah, I look, just repeating what the council guy said. They they'll, they'll call the cops in to enforce the fine, uh, which they can do. Uh, good question. Good question. Yeah, it, it, it that in itself would be illegal. The the other thing is that I I know from past reading that challenging uh, fines in court is not a good idea uh, because you generally lose and have a huge, huge legal expenses stacked on top of your fine as well. Uh, I personally have had a lot of parking tickets and, and pay them off at 10 bucks a fortnight. Uh, if it's as little as $2 a fortnight, then that would be an unnoticeable amount out of your income for the next <coughs> 20 years or whatever. Um, yep. Um, just to clarify, due to interest, they're now $10 a fortnight, not $2. And what was the other point? Something about what you were saying. Just don't know. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So if they if they bring the cop if if the, if someone if the council person tries to give you a ticket and you just fucking run for it and they can't catch you and they can't identify you then there's nothing they can do. But if they turn up with coppers, then the cops can stop you and force you to take. Or at least identify yourself as an agency. Ahmed, what if you're not an Australian citizen? You can just go. Then will they give me those five hundred dollars? And then when I leave the country, I have to pay them. If I don't have any money, what are they going to say? You have to stay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they let you go. The only else. thing is, if they're really, really massive, it can be on your visa list for next time you come. Oh. Otherwise, it's nothing. And 500 bucks. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Roger. Roger. Uh, I know um, Thomas and Kelly um, from the organising committee, that I say it, um, beat quite a few parking fines, like thousands of dollars worth of parking fines by running the line in court that they're sovereign, sovereign beings and that the council doesn't have. Uh, sovereign authority over a sovereign being, and a sovereign being as a, as a, uh, because the parking fines and any council regulations aren't common law, then they've managed to beat it in the magistrate's court. So the other thing about taking it to court is that you can then go and appeal it to another court, and, and that action in itself sort of really binds up the system, and if everyone agrees to do that, they're going to get really jacked off and go, oh, God, what have you. But, so um, Thomas and Kelly might be able to help out with options for um, taking the fines and beating them. So I'll speak to them. Can I suggest, like for tonight, like there's a lot of different ideas. Like, and when we met after we, there was the fines issue the other day, there was a lot of ideas and contentious legal sort of arguments. I think it's better if we wait until we've got like legal advice from a civil liberties lawyer. Um, and actually have those discussions in the legal working group as well and reported back to the GAs rather than people sort of, yeah, doing random stuff or whatever. Um, the second thing is that when they came the other morning, the police were with the council officers. Like, they don't, they're not going to wait and then call in the police. They'll come with the police, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't hear your name. Oh, I'm Emma. I Emma. was just going to say as well, maybe leave it to the legal group because we don't get... So maybe the more, most important thing to discuss here is um, what we should do about staying here, like now, or to, what, tonight, or tomorrow night, or whatever. Kathy? Um, I wanted to speak to that in terms of uh, Post Office Square. Um, it's very quiet on the weekends um, at Post Office Square, whereas down here okay. there's a lot of people that come down for picnics, um, there's the markets just up the, the road there. And my feeling is if we march tomorrow from Brisbane Square over to here, we'd pick up a lot of support through West End, we'd let people know we were down here and we'll get a lot of visitors over the weekend. And my, my feeling is we really need that at the moment. Um, and we just, it would be really good to have the next two days um, to just concentrate on getting those working groups happening, um, having those discussions. And I think for a lot of people, um, just a little bit of a, a, this space is much better just to recuperate after the last um, day or two. Um, and then maybe like Sunday night discussing, you know, where we, I, I totally agree getting back into the city, but I think it'd be better to do it during the week. 
Uh, oh, sorry, I wasn't looking. Who was first out of you two? Be honest. Oh. <laughs> uh, just to back that up, um, at the 12 o'clock meeting today, someone mentioned that um, the neighbours <coughs> were, like, pissed off that we were here. I, I talked to someone who lives on the street today, and I said to them, how do you feel? And she's like, this is bloody awesome. I'm glad you're here. And also suggested that um, if we are going to stay here, uh, maybe we do a door knock and introduce ourselves um, in a really non-threatening way, just to let them know we are here, this is what we stand for, and if you have any problems, like, we're peaceful, come and talk to us before you call the cops. Like, we want to engage in dialogue. And that was, that was a suggestion of someone who lives on this street. So just to back that up, we're welcome. Sorry, I missed you, Ben. You're right. You go. Um, just a, a quick idea that I had today. Um, I was looking at some stuff on eBay, and you can get a trailer that attaches to your push bike. <laughs> Wonder if we could get away with, um, yeah, sleeping in trailers on push bikes. <laughs> <laughs> then you could dress up your push bike. You can't, they can't. Get up you for blinging up. What about for my bike. scooter? Can we get one for my uh, scooter? Sure. I didn't get your name. Oh, oh, sorry. I don't know your name. I think it's out. it's really important. It's not just us here, it's not all the people that support us. Like we have followers. Like if you see our the Facebook uh, page is five thousand followers. So there's people that know what's happening. So if we to reinforce what you said, um, we have an opportunity to like for being in West End. So we should make the best we can here. You know what I mean? Like, it's like if someone comes, like yeah, really, really friendly. As well, swearing is is another thing. Like I've seen, I just not putting my opinion on anyone. But if someone comes and is with his kids, you know, like they have, they want to have the best impression of us, and it's really, really important. We are in the place where we can have like lots of followers, and that will really help us. Um, I I really agree, and I agree with what's was saying around this area over the weekend. Um, I also um, want to say that idea about door knocking um, I think is really good. So to put something concrete on that, um, I, I'm, I've been part of the community outreach group and I'm, I'm quite willing to involve that in what we do. Maybe anyone interested in that can meet after this. And I, w I really want to, we can discuss ways to do it then, but I also really want to see those other people that are in this park as well in that. So anyone who's interested in sort of relating to the people and letting them know what's happening and seeing what they want and what they feel. Yeah, just meet after this. Yeah. Sorry, what was your name? Megan. Um, I just wanted to add quickly to the watching your language and not swearing suggestions. Is One, it will make it a more family-friendly place for our occupiers that are involved to have swearing or very little swearing. I swear like a sailor. I understand the difficulty of avoiding swearing, but um, the uh, Chris, the uh, council member that came and spoke to us, did mention language as one of the issues, and that's an issue that we can easily just deal with by not swearing, and it will also garner support for us by following a suggestion that the council said, God forbid. <laughs> I had about four or five people that live along this stretch come and said that yes, it's good to have this in the park. And the same one, one that actually suggested putting um, yeah, pamphlets, uh, writing out a thing to state that we're here and if, if there's problems to, you know, better, I like your idea better where we can have an actual physical interaction with the uh, people that live here. Uh, Emma? Uh, you were next. Oh, yeah. oh, was it? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to talk on Lang's original point about um, going back to Post Office Square. I'm not saying move the camp back there, and I don't can't tend to camp in the night, so I don't have a lot of opinion about where we camp. But for me, it's largely about continuing to occupy a whole lot of spaces, spaces on the internet, spaces, real spaces everywhere. Um, and so I just want to um, put up that I think that having like solid weekly gatherings is really, really important and almost as important as having a continual camp. That's fine, people who want to camp here, but maintaining a really strong, um, a strong, you know, I don't know what the word is, but 
Thanks, thing presents. happening every Thanks. single week. Yeah. And Ooh. it would be really cool. Presents. And I, presents, thank you. A really strong present. And I think that will be really powerful to do that at Post Office Square. Mm. So every you know Saturday, wherever we are having them, I think it would be really powerful to go back to that place where we originally were. And I think it's really well situated for our, the, the, our movement as well in terms of our message suggestion. Uh, Ahmed, yeah, uh, uh, about the swearing language, if you really have to swear, just substitute it like fudge or frack or whatever. Frack. Uh, frack. 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 Fudge. Chocolate fudge. Uh, I was going to say, um, the idea of concentrating up this end of town and West End up here might actually be a good idea because um, a lot of the people in the city, um, a lot of business people, don't even have the time of day for us. Through West End, there's a lot of small businesses. Um, I know that there's lots of tradies that work in West End. Up this way, there's residentials. And some of these people might be more open to our message. Because it's like, um, for the time that we've been going, a lot of people that have backed us are people like small businesses um, tradies and stuff like that, people that have felt the brunt of what this economic situation can do. Whereas a lot of them people in the city are not going to lose their job because they're well looked after. That's just a Blank. Um, yeah, just some thoughts on staying here and in regards to the legalities. Um, if I think we're not going to gain anything by unless unless they do it really loosely, we're not going to gain anything by trying to dodge the actual occupying thing. So if we just do it really tight and compact and stick together as a group and take it all together and not leave anyone behind and be neat and tidy about it, and be accepting and and like you know take it as a as a sort of a, mo a movement instead of just an individual kind of thing, then we'll we'll not only will we we uh, will we be more unified, but We'll have more of it. It'll be more of an inspiration to everyone else as well. The fact that we were so together. Um, also, he mentioned it's illegal to hand out literature, but we don't actually have to hand it out. If we sit back and, and have a tray in front of us with literature on it, people can take it. I, maybe I don't know. Like I don't know the full legalities, but um, yeah. Amy. Um, I, I thought that um, you someone mentioned earlier the idea about. Um, going into the city on the weekends, uh, but Kathy had mentioned earlier that it's actually really quiet in the city on the weekends, so yes, I think it's a good idea to get that visibility going, but again, um, most visibility. So this is where people are going to come. Maybe we can pick another path where people go that's not in the city, uh, just as an alternative. We don't have to keep going back there. You know. um, just for myself, uh, I'd suggest the entrance to the West End markets, uh, where we've set up stalls for years without a permit, um, and they just let you let you do it. You're standing in full blazing sun, but uh, that's the downside. Uh, Emma, next. Uh, just, just it, it is awesome that we have a lot of sympathy from people in West End, and that's a really, really great thing. It definitely is about engaging them, but for me, it's really important to be. Um, engaging people that aren't engaged and that feel like they don't have the time for us but also um, you know being in the city where all the businesses are because I think well for me that's quite a, a strong part of our message um, and I also think there's a lot of power in um, because we had such a strong setup where we were in saying you know we're still here you know maybe we're not sleeping here but yeah for me that park has a lot of power to it um, and yeah, I, and I feel like that park is very special and will be very special and I'd like to maintain that and by having rallies there, that'd be really cool. Did I say this park? No, Post Office Square, where oh, it first started back, in the back. city. Yeah. Okay, Max, did you put your hand up before? Uh, no, I'm no. Uh, Jenny? Yeah, um, on the thing of parks, this is just a suggestion, it's probably a crap one. You said park, He's never visited by the coppers. That's just a thought. New farm park. Newstead. Newstead. The kind of one. Uh, That's out the west, Fortitude Valley Way. Jose, did you indicate before? 
I saw someone over here put their hand up, up before. Here. No? Okay, uh, I've got. Yeah, K next. K. Oh, oh, I'll jump back a bit. Just the thing of fines. Fines came the day before the rally. Now, a lot of people in the post office where it came in sort of said, Oh, my friend said to me, stay away from get arrested. Fine. I'm just thinking it's just free rally night here. Hmm. Too convenient. Maybe if it does keep happening, we can do a gorilla occupy or something. <laughs> South <laughs> Bank's brilliant. Also, too, I really, I really feel that by distributing the wealth, Earth's inherent to all. Bringing in as many publics and making that line between occupied people and the public so fluid because Occupy is the public. And the more people around, the world's watching, Brisbane's watching, let them go up and give the wrong person a free mind still. If that's the case, so anything that's bringing public people in, inviting people. Tom? Uh, yeah, there's two different issues we've got to deal with, I think, uh, <coughs> sooner rather than later, like in the next half hour or so. One is where we end up tomorrow afternoon at the end of the rally. And then the other one is, well, what happens if we're rally tonight here at uh, Orley Park or where do we go next? Can I just try and get closure on where people want to end up tomorrow? Because my reservation about ending up back here leaving aside whether or not we actually try and occupy here, it's a bloody long way from the centre of town. It'll be 30 degrees. Uh, so I'd rather do a loop around the city and end up in Post Office Square. That's not saying I think we should try and occupy Post Office Square. I'm just simply saying as a place where we can finish a rally. What people do after that, obviously, is a different decision. Um, I just think the possibility, I've been here on Invasion Day rallies. You march to Marsgrave Park. That's long enough uh, when it's hot weather. This is longer again by maybe a kilometre. So I just think that marching all the way to here yeah. tomorrow afternoon, we're going to lose most of the crowd. So right. rather yeah. keep the crowd together and then finish, and then people can do something after that, than just end up in a, a small dribble of people ending up here in Orley Park. So my suggestion is we do a, a block around the city uh, and end up in Post Office Square. <coughs> <Finish>. <coughs> Yeah, I think the march should end where we where we occupy. We, we started we're starting in Brisbane Square. I'm not sure with the march route. Is that is that doing the block? Does anyone know the actual march route that the permit's been put in for? We're supposed to go past uh, near Post Office Square and then towards wherever we're occupying. So a lap of the city. So we're, we're not going to actually go to the Park Street Square, but the, the end side of the Queen Street where Commonwealth Bank is there on the corner, that's where we're supposed to do a sit down. Yeah. Then after the sit down, <coughs> we have a peaceful uh, few minutes there. Uh, we should be going to where we're occupying. Um, and we probably need to discuss that like in the next topic or anything like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's that. It's that much further. Um, you know, if if people if people are tired, then I don't know. They can get the bus or work out some of. Because I think it, I think if we don't take the march back, we're probably going to lose more people. More people are just going to go, oh, yep, it's over now, and they'll drift <coughs> off. Whereas if, if people come with us to, to, to where, where we're occupying, then they'll, they might, they'll hang around, I think. Um, the other thing I wanted to suggest is that I think that people should have all their stuff as able to, to pack it up in a pack and carry it on their back for those people that are, that are occupying basically have all your things in one bag that you can pick up and move. So that way, if we decide that, you know, we're somewhere like here or, or Davies Park on, on a weekend, then we can still come in, we pick up all your stuff, you, can, you take responsibility <coughs> for it, and we can go into the city during the week. But And that way it just keeps us mobile. Mobile for what we decide to do, and mobile for what happens. When, when when the authorities come and move people somewhere. Because we can't keep going on with these huge hit fires and stuff.
every time we have to play. Because it's, it's a problem, and our life would be a lot easier if, if people could just carry their homes themselves on their backs. Uh, Lang, next. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, um, if I was in the city, um, at the corner of Queen Street Mall, looking to march out to somewhere near, or like Orly Park, for example, I'd feel very intimidated by the length of that walk. Um, and possibly, if I wasn't completely passionate about the cause, I wouldn't be a drifter on, I wouldn't sort of follow on. Um, maybe a suggestion for that could be that we organise an event here afterwards, like a barbecue or some, some like, forums or something, I don't know, but um, some sort of incentive to create interest. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, just have myself, then Max. Um, I just have, I want to say that walking from Post Office Square to walking here is a 45 minute to an hour long walk, just so everyone's aware of that period of time we're talking about There's merging. a lot of beer places. <laughs> Beer, hot weather, <laughs> temptations. Yeah. Um, actually, I won't raise my point just yet. Max? Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, I think this comes up as a topic anyway, but um, the issue of, of tents and um, infrastructure and so on. Like, basically, at the moment, where. Um, uh, I mean, we had two beautiful weeks at Post Office Square <coughs> where we. Um, Sort of became a community, and we had a stability and structure, and thought, and you know, it was real. It was really nice, um, and we we've, we've lost that, and we've been moved from pillar to post since. But I think um, we don't have to be victims. We can't. We haven't got a place yet to call our own, but we still don't have to be victims. We can we can roll with the punches. We just have to accept that the scenario at the moment is that we're going from place to place to place, and. We just have to we have to change our mode of thinking, um, and we have to be prepared to pack our tents up every every night. And in fact, I think that if we did, if every morning we get up 6:30, pack a tent up, roll up, put in a pack, put it on our back, and the council arrive, and there's a bunch of people here with backpacks. <laughs> um, you know, we've got to be prepared to do that. Uh, if if we, um, I know it's, it's it's hard, but we're not like on a camping holiday and. Uh, if we can learn to roll with the punches, we're going to feel much more united as a group. We're going to feel invigorated because the council turn up and, hey, they, what can they do? Um, you know, or, or we just get up, bang, move, another place. Like um, So every night we're at a different place and the council end up getting sick of it and, go, and let, letting just letting us stay at some place for three nights in a row because they couldn't be bothered coming down and finding us every morning. So, um, yeah, we just learn to roll with the punches. Can no, I say sorry, on that, that oh, was okay. next. Just on that point, and there's heaps of strength in that, in moving around and in rolling with the punches, and we should feel really good about that, yep. and that we should use that to keep up our momentum, and that occupying doesn't have to be in one spot. We are occupying around, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I just, I, I just had something, I had the term activism re redefined for me today because I've never been an activist and I don't really consider myself an activist because I hear stories of extreme events happening and like, you know, like things are pretty, I guess, pretty hectic here, but um, activism is a term that refers to anyone who is active and I consider it active towards a social change and that includes everyone who has anything to do with this occupation. So. Um, I just thought that was like it was inspirational to me because I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm right I'm right into this. I'm an activist, you know, like cool. Kathy yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, or Hamish, who was first? Yeah, I, I think on traveling light, um, one of the issues is stuff getting bought back to the camp from where it's been stored because a lot of the storage has been temporary. Um, one, uh, I think Lillian might have gone now, but she was talking today about um, helping to coordinate the sort of um, the storage of the stuff in lots, like the kitchen stuff together, tents and tarps together, the library together, and that sort of thing, and finding off site places. And she's identified off site places for all of those things, um, and she's able to store tents and tarps and those sort of things. So. If we ever do, or when we do, establish more of a permanent camp, we can, you know, bring in those things. Um, but I think it's quite important that we 
keep that organised, like the stuff that's sort of getting brought back here from storage, we get that off site um, and, and keep that, that mobility. Um, so I, I guess to propose that, um, Lillian's gone, but she, she's, she said that she's happy to sort of organise that over the next few days. So I wanted to propose that um, for, yeah, to, to, to I guess, formalise that. Um, just And just secondly, um, yeah, I, I agree about the mu maybe marching around the city, but then um, having people come over here, maybe we can all jump on the 199 or something, which ends up here. Um, Is there a free loop? We have to decide where we're going. Public transportation. Can we get you on the bus? Okay, everyone likes the bus idea. Hamish was next, then Jacob. Yeah, I won't die in the ditch about the long death march. Okay. I was wondering, have we made a decision yet where we're camping tomorrow after the rally? Where we're ending? Yeah, where we're ending. Where we're ending the rally. Okay, so Jenny. Can we do that? I'd like to know why people always move on when they say move on. What's the criteria behind that? Well, take it, take it. Uh, just, yep. I think um, we did bring up earlier that currently we don't know what our rights are. And so um, I guess until we have a lot more information that we know, um, maybe it's a personal choice whether or not you stay, resist, uh, that's that's your personal choice um, because we don't know what our individual or our collective rights actually are so it's hard to say like it's a it's a loaded question um, in that Why is it a loaded question? because we don't actually know the answer like we don't know our rights um, you know everyone's gonna stay for a different reason there might be some people here who have a criminal history the last thing they need or be on probation they don't need. Individual. Okay, I can't I'm just like, yeah. that's uh, all right. So there are people who have more risk in um, in taking that, and we've talked about it so many times in other meetings. Mm. I don't really know why we have to cover it again. Mm. Just as my point, and and that we had already decided that at this point, it's an individual decision whether or not you decide to stay. Um, it's not going to be like everyone link arms oh, and be forced to. Amy, Amy has the floor. Jenny, Jenny, I'm going to have to. I just finish on that. Like I, I personally believe, and I thought that was a consensus that at this point in time, it's an individual choice. Okay, um, we have a roll it on. We have a roll it on. Um, before I go to Max, <laughs> we do need to make a decision. We should make that very soon. Where the march uh, ends, and perhaps a clarification on the march route. Have we booked a route, or has someone already uh, picked a route on behalf of the group, or whatever? Max. Um, oh, I'm just on the, on the legal issue. Um, it was explained to us very clearly by the police who arrived at uh, Emma Miller Place at uh, 6.30 in the morning uh, to let us know exactly what was going to go down. And um, <clears throat> what they said was the council will come in, um, will um, uh, issue fines, um, and then if we fail to move after that, um, the police will come in and arrest us. So. Depending on the size of the group, with a relatively small group, um, the police will come in if we if we do decide to stay in one place. The police will come in and arrest us all, and we'll go up to um, to the watch house and then to court and get fined and the whole whole rest of it. So it's perhaps not with a small group. Um, I don't think it will achieve much, but once we've got a large group, then it's a lot less, lot less likely that they're going to. Uh, arrest everyone. So, as a small group, we're rather powerless and probably, um, excuse it, going to go into the wind um, if, if we if we do insist on getting arrested. But but but, Mark, but there's no question about it. We will be moved on. So they, they will physically move us on. So we won't, we won't be able to stay. Stand our ground. They won't. No, no, they they will. They'll physically move us on. Anyway. So, I think the rally was the next. Yeah, I don't see anyone else with their things up, so I'm just going to uh, talk. Link. Um, I'm just going to back up Kathy's proposal to end at Post Office Square tomorrow afternoon, and then 
we can just we can do whatever we want. We can catch a bus back here. We can occupy that. It doesn't matter. But I think it's important that we get that proposal to end up at Post Office Square tomorrow afternoon at the rally. This is okay. any point. Okay, so we have that proposal on the table um, for lack of another. Uh, uh, is there consensus on that proposal to start at Brisbane Square, finish at Post Office Square, and uh, people make their own way back to Orly Park? Okay, yeah, and I do want to speak on that actually. That, so there's a proposal that Lillian take charge of the off-site storage. Uh, She's going to go to the activist centre on Sunday at 6 o'clock to pick up the rest of the stuff. Okay, okay. We well she'll need to coordinate that with, that with me and I'll need her number. Uh, I think we did. Uh, okay, so... Is that consensus on the march, just for the minute, sorry? Yes, consensus yeah. on the march route there to Post Office Square and... Um, uh, Kathy's asked for consensus on Lillian taking charge of the off-site storage. And, and that she's planning to go to the activist centre on Sunday um, at 6 to pick up the rest of the stuff there and she can sort that out into the bits that, that like, and put them in the appropriate place, whether it's library, kitchen, um, pets. Uh, Alright, well, I'd, I'd like to amend that to say that I talk with Lillian and we arrange a time because I'm going to be the guy letting her in to the Activist Centre. Is Lillian here? Yeah, well, she'd already talked to her phone. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Um, all right, well, we're discussing still the rally, uh, how the thing is. I talked to uh, Tim. The council haven't called us back about the permit. Uh, I presume that we should go ahead with it. It's something yeah. that we can wait. Not that they're gonna call us tomorrow early and say, "Yeah, it's all right." You know, I don't think they give a shit right now. Um, uh, sorry about the language, by the way. Um, about the route, I think it's gonna be Brisbane Square, and then we go because we have to think about how the how the traffic goes. So we'll have to come to some kind of consensus on which way we're gonna follow the traffic. But it's gonna be in a square, so we end up in Brisbane Square again. So we have to make sure that we pass. Post Office Square, Adelaide Street or something, uh, Tim told me, and then we shall end up again on Brisbane Square. That's kind of how it was supposed to look like when we just talked about it in the rally group, in that rally group. Can't we just stop at Post Office Square? Uh, we, was, we talked about we, that we're going to have a, a moment of um, silence uh, on the other side of Commonwealth Bank, on the other side of the street, because that's where uh, they decided to bomb Japan during World War II. Uh, so we were thinking about sitting there for a minute, uh, just having a quiet uh, think. That I suppose that we could all go back to Post Office Square after that minute of silence and uh, you know have speakers of entertainment or whatever we thought about having there. Okay, Lang? So is that not consensus on... Well, we've, yeah, we've just talking. reached consensus on going finishing at Post Office Square, so Ahmed's... Right, so we're going to finish on the first Are you putting up an opposing... <laughs> no, no, this is what I, I just, I just like, yeah, I just like to, like, because it's new information now that we didn't have before. So, um, two, two points the there. One is that if we finish at Post Office Square, it'll halve the length of the rally, which I don't know is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, ah, if, if we stop at Post Office Square, it'll halve the length of, of the rally. Um, so I don't know, I, I think, I'd say a longer rally the better, but that's just me. Um, also, uh, does anyone know where that meeting was at, at 3.30? Brisbane Square? Advertised for Musgrave Park. Musgrave, Musgrave Park. Park. But it's going to be... Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's all then. Uh, just a question. Uh, Hamish was next, Okay, now, if that's the permit that's been put in, um, I suggest we go with it, because... Like Ahmed said, Tim said to him that council hasn't said anything. They don't have to. The, the way that the way that process works is that they've got five days to challenge it. If they don't, then it's it's our it's legally we are allowed to do that that march route as as specified. So I say that we we go with that. That's what if that's what's already been put in, then 
stats less blocks. That's not saying that they're not going to play play uh, games with us because that's what they do. But at least we've got that to fall back on. That we can we've, we've done it the right way. For their thing. Uh, Ahmed, um, I don't know exactly because I don't know how the routes go, but if the 199 goes from around Brisbane Square, yeah. that would be a brilliant idea to end it in Brisbane Square because. It does. Uh, it goes from Adelaide Street, no, it but doesn't. it's not far. Or everywhere in the city is fine. It's the city hall that you get the 199 mm. from, or the city glider. Right, the city glider goes also here, all the way here. Yeah. 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 So Can clarify that was finishing at what? Brisbane Square. Brisbane Square. So we, it's a square, so we walk in a square. Okay. Oh, sorry, Kate. Okay. Yeah, just last time when you came over the bridge, a lot of people slowed down. I'll be one. I would have really sore I just sit today. What about there's going to be people who fall off at the back and one speed, how fast we go, because the margins, you know, some people feel a bit fast and I don't know, they might be speaking to that. But when the stragglers fall back, that they don't just split off individually, that they stay together and maybe they can, as a secondary thing, go on the bus back over there while the others go. So Jenny, I'm thinking rather than losing sorry. our numbers. Point of clarification, we have decided to finish at Post Office Square. So what are we talking about now? Yeah. New information, Tom. So we've got new information uh, to clarify and, and we, we will have to call again for consensus on, on the new motion based on the new information, which is now finishing at Brisbane Square according to the permit. Um, yes, your name, sir? This is about the rally, yeah? yeah. This yeah. is about the rally, yeah. Yeah. Um, just in terms of when we're marching, um, is Aaron still marching with his bagpipes on and so, if he's going to be marching with his bagpipes, Johnny raised a very good point that um, what we should do as a show of solidarity, I mean, he's going to get issued a ticket. We know that that's what's going to happen. Oh, it's not going to happen? Well, it could happen. And what we should do is we should, he should, instead of being at the front, he should be in the centre. And then everybody can form lines around him so that when people... So that if somebody goes to give him a ticket, they have to get through us <laughs> first, and that's a show of unity and solidarity <coughs> and organisation on from the occupiers. So that's my proposal. That's a proposal. I'm not sure if I cut in, but that's a proposal. No, you didn't. Um, and I, uh, I'll just go through the speaking list. There yeah. was was Tom next? Did anyone else have a hand? Up? Okay, Tom, did you still want to speak? Is Tom still? Oh, he's not here. Lang. I'm just, I, I think that's a great idea. Oh, well, two things. First thing in response to that. But I think it's very important that we really keep it peaceful. Like, we, oh, yeah. yeah, just, just I know because on a march you get really fired up and passionate. But I think there can't be any moves. Like, if we're, if we're pulled out, then we just, I, 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 I'm going to just get pulled out. You know, I'm not going to. I agree. Oh, I agree. I just think that, like, um, it's like, that's going to lessen the chance of him getting a fine because that means they're going to have to pull out lines of yeah. people to get to him. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think we okay. should maintain peace. Let's let Lang finish. But yeah. yeah. Uh, the second thing was like just considering all this new information, the permit um, and the convenience of the buses, I, I just want to, like maybe after Hamish speaks, I want to propose that we do do that loop as a final thing just so we get a consensus on that and it's done because I think it's a good idea. I think, you know, march around the city, end up in the same spot. It's all, like, applied for already, even if we haven't got a response. And it fits well in whatever's happening. So, yeah. Hamish? Okay, just to clarify a few things. Um, we're not going over the bridge. We're not going... We're just doing a loop in the city. Um, I do think it's important that the, the pace is kept to a reasonable level because we do have that problem. It's a problem with all marches. You get the people charged to the front and they, and they, and they sort of push it along and then the people that are a bit slower get dragged, you know, gradually left behind. Um, and sometimes the cops pick people off at the back. So we have to make sure that we keep everyone together. Um, and maybe on the day, a few people can keep an eye out on that. Um, often it's done informally. On the, on the pipes, um, I'm not a lawyer, I, but I'm, I'm pretty sure 
that Aaron will be protected because we've got the permit and it's a march. Like those things that they're getting Aaron for uh, are council bylaws. The same, it's in the same section that talks about putting up tents and things like that. So if it's part of a procession or a march, then it's a, it's it's not council business. Just have myself quickly. I oh know Kathy was next, then me. Um, well, I, I want to talk to someone else about the rally, so maybe we can finish off this point first. The bagpipe point? No, 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 the, the march route. Are I, we still on that? Or? Yeah, okay, so we're talking about the march route. I, um, Roger, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Go on. No. <laughs> Let's go. I just wanted to um, reaffirm what some people said about the marching. <coughs> and um, an old uh, bushwalking trick is if you're in a group of people bushwalking, the lead bushwalker is responsible for being aware of the pace of the previous member of the, the the last person. So it's not the responsibility of the, the last person to keep up with the bushwork. It's the responsibility of the leaders to not let the the, part, the, the last people get out of sight because they're going so fast. So maybe if we can talk to the people, and if we have an understanding with the people in the lead of the march, it, to be slightly aware of where the back of the march is at, so they can keep their pace uh, to match the rear of the march, not the front, not their personal. Uh, uh, sorry, is your name Roger? Uh, Stephen. David, sorry David, I don't know where I got Roger from. Stephen, sorry. Stephen. 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 Okay. Uh, we should march behind the banner. Uh, the banner should make it late. <coughs> work on that. Uh, I, mean, I agree, we should have a banner or something in front, but the people that are carrying it, like the most ideal thing, not to be judgmental, but is two short people that are really walking because they have short legs. <laughs> so they won't have. Last time we had really tall people, and yeah, they're quicker, faster than everyone. I must say that I am very short and walk very quickly. <laughs> uh, compensation. Kathy. Um, we don't, the only banner that we've got, I'm not sure where it is, it might be at Roberts, um, but it's got sort of other, I was just going to propose um, we do a quick spray paint banner in the morning, um, like on a long piece of calico with something like Occupy Brisbane, still here, still occupying, join us. Um, and that just because the problem last week was the, the banner we had wasn't long enough, so people kept coming up the sides um, past the the lead sign, um, and then that set the pace. Whereas if you have the lead banner that's long enough, then then that's not a problem. So. Emmy. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't mean to discredit what anyone said, but I'm starting to get tired. Yeah. So I was. This is what democracy looks like! <laughs> so I was um, hoping that we could um, get a little bit clearer about what we want to sort out. Um, like, so are we going to say we agree with the, the, the route? Yeah. Move on that. Um, can we agree on where we're going to meet up afterwards? And yeah. is that what we're talking about now? Because, yeah. Just consent on these things. I this kind of just feels like a conversation. Yeah. I know, like, it should be in the working groups. Yeah. Just on topic. Okay. This is. I also <laughs> want to. So, sorry. Yeah. Was it just on topic of the route and where to go afterwards? Yeah. All right. So let's get consensus on that now. Um, now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the motion is to commence at Brisbane Square, do a lap of the block, <laughs> and someone will know the exact route. I'm hoping. Uh, do a lap of the block and finish back at Brisbane Square as per the permit. Do we have consensus? Um, and shall I say it's assumed that we then um, gather people and head back here? Yeah. yeah is, that, is that it? So that afterwards coming here? Afterwards coming here. Yeah. And uh, there will be a couple of crew at Musgrave Park to direct WikiLeaks people back here as well. Um, so, do we have consensus on the banner with the wording uh, Kathy mentioned? We do. And I, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy. Um, I, I just wanted to propose too because it, the media will be there tomorrow and they'll want to talk to people. I wanted to propose Lang and Jasmine as media spokespeople for the, the day, if they're agreeable. Oh. Um, 
Jasmine? Jasmine? Um. Um. Jasmine! Personally, yes. I'd be alright with that, but just saying, I don't have very much experience with the media. Like, I can present what I say quite well, but just, you know, yeah, I'm happy with that. A consensus on Lang and Jasmine if she wants, but if not, just Lang? If, if what? Not, about or if not, a backup? Does, so, what is the, what is the, the media the, spokesperson? Uh, media woman, spokesperson. Yeah, Amy. Yeah, I wouldn't mind I, as well. Can, can I suggest that, that I, I think we need a gender balance yeah, um, yeah. in yeah. the, the, the spokespeople? I'll I put my hand up go back. with that uh, consensus then on Lang and Amy. Uh, that's if Jasmine is unwilling to do oh, it. Oh, Jasmine as well. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing it as well, but four is too many. Too I, many I think right. we should three limit three it to two, yeah. personally. Yeah. A man and a woman, and yes, and there will be more opportunities. Should we do so, Amy because she's here? Sorry? All right, shall we just do Amy this time because she's here? Uh, so, Amy <laughs> and Lang consensus. Do we have? All right. Um, I just want to put one more quick one that we appoint two marshals to keep the pace of the march at a reasonable pace to stand at the front and slow people down if they are losing people at the back. And I'm happy to nominate as one of those. Uh, Jamie's nominating as well. Yeah, cool. Okay. We have, uh, what time is it tomorrow? Do we have any? The rally, 12 o'clock. Marshall yeah. doing that sort of job can't just be at the front. They have to they have to run up and down from the back to the front like a like a sheepdog. <laughs> That's the only way you can do it because they often I've seen it happen too many times with the marshals at the front. They they don't they lose sight of the back. So you, it's got to be a, a constant up and down. Okay, so I'm happy to be a sheepdog. <laughs> Jamie's more happy, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Megan. Um, I should have a piece of orange material that the marshal marshals can, it's just a piece of material you can tie around your arm so everybody can tell who's the marshal. Um, and if we have a large enough crowd that we need to add a 